Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. If you have a list of yes-no survey questions, Excel will do a good job of compiling the results, but it isn't obvious or straightforward. Here's a solution I found that does a good job using the if, concatenate, and substitute functions. So let's take a look, see how it works. Here are simplified results of what a survey might show you. We want the last column to show a comma-separated list of which flavors each person likes. So it will be like chocolate, comma, vanilla, and so on. Let's build this piece by piece. Now, you see the first flavor here is chocolate. And what we can do is use the if function to say that if there is an X in the first column there in that chocolate column, then grab that name from the column header and we put it there in column A. Now, I've already done an episode on the if function, so I won't go through the syntax again. If you need a refresher, please go back and watch it. So let's go in here and do it. So I'm going to say equals if, open the parenthesis, and I'm going to say, OK, if B2 equals X, and I got to put the X in double quotation marks, Notice it does not have to be case sensitive, but it does have to be in quotation marks, comma, then let's go and grab this header that's in B1. So I'm going to click that B1. Now, once we're done with this formula for line two, for row two, we're going to autofill this down. So I want to make sure that B1 is an absolute reference. Also, we've talked about absolute references in previous episodes, so also I'm not going to go into that in detail. I'm just going to hit the F4 function key or function F4 to make that absolute. And comma, if we do not find an X in that column, we're just going to have that column empty. So I'm going to have a pair of empty quotation marks, close the parenthesis. So this is just the beginning of this formula. So I'm going to enter it and then we can say, okay, yes, indeed that we found chocolate in column B. Now there's still Rocky Road that's chosen there in column D, and we're going to get to that in a moment. Let's go in here, edit this a little further, and this is going to throw an error, but you'll see what's going on. So I could say, all right, well, I've got that chocolate. Well, what about vanilla? So I can simply say, all right, if C2 has a value of x, then we're going to grab the header there. We're going to make that absolute. And if not, empty set of parentheses. Actually, to save some typing, let's grab this. I'm going to copy to the clipboard and put it in again. So this time we're going to look at D2. Does that have an accent? If so, let's put in the content of D1. Now this is going to throw an error, as I said, and you'll see why. I'll just hit enter and say, okay, value. Pound value, there's an error. Let's go in there. And you just can't write a formula this way. You can't just have a whole bunch of if functions one after another. But what we can do is use the concatenate function to piece these together. Let me show you the syntax of the concatenate function. It's pretty straightforward. We say equals concatenate. And then you simply have a whole bunch of values. Value one, value two, value three, however many you have, all in parentheses. And the value can be text, it could be a number, it could be a cell reference, it could be a whole long formula, could be anything you want. Just have to remember to separate all of those values with commas. So now let's go fix this problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that if, so I'm gonna go right after that equal sign, I'm gonna stuff this whole thing in the concatenate function. I don't have to type the whole thing because Excel gives me that little syntax help. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, let's grab that if, that's the first value, comma, that second if is the second value, comma, that third if is the third and final value, and now we have to remember to close that last parenthesis. Enter. So we're getting there, but hey, we need some commas, right? Because it's just 
shoving in value after value. And in fact, let's say if I went there to vanilla and I put an X in there, we're just going to get this all smushed together. Oh, I'll undo that. So let's go and fix that. So what I'm going to do is insert a comma and a space between the values using a different method of concatenation with the ampersand symbol. In the if function, for the true part of that function, for columns C and D, we're going to insert a comma and a space inside quotation marks. So what I'm going to do there is if C2 is X, that what's true? So I'm going to open up quotation mark, comma, space, close the quotation mark, and now an ampersand. So we're going to say if C2 contains an X value, if it contains a value, insert a comma, space, and the value of that header. And now we'll do this for column D. So if you find that, we're going to say, okay, give me an open quote. So give me a comma, a space, close a quote, and another ampersand, and D1. Notice I did not do that for the first if, and we're going to see what happens with that a little bit later. Let's enter it. Okay, that's great. So there's chocolate, there's Rocky Road, and let's actually go and fill this. There we go. Sometimes that little mouse pointer doesn't show up. And well, it's okay for this one and for this one and for this one, but we've got a bit of a problem because for the second one, we've got a comma because the thing doesn't exist. So we don't want to begin with a comma. And also for this last one, there's nothing in the first column. So we're beginning with a comma. We can't really tell the formula just not to put a comma in there, but we can tell it that if it finds a comma as the first item in the list, to substitute it with nothing. So the substitute function we covered in the previous episode on splitting text with the filter XML function. So you could go back and watch that if you need. I'm just going to go and show the syntax briefly, just because it might be a little complicated. So if you may remember, the substitute function replaces text based on the content that it's looking at. So the syntax is equal substitute. And then the first thing you do is you put in either the formula or text or the cell reference you're looking to work on, and then simply what's the old text that you're replacing and what's the new text you're replacing with. There is a fourth argument that's optional where you can specify, is there a specific instance number? So maybe if there's two or three instances of the thing that you're looking to substitute, you don't have to substitute the first one. You could substitute the second or the third. And we're going to see the implications of that also in a little bit. So let's just delete all of this stuff here. Let's go back into the original formula. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire thing, the concatenate and the if, and I'm going to nest all of that in the substitute function. So right after the equals, I'm going to put in substitute. Again, I don't have to type the whole thing because Excel is giving me that suggestion. And it opens up its own parenthesis, which is great. And I'm actually going to do this a little incorrectly so you can see what happens if you're not careful or if you substitute the wrong thing. So I'm going to say, OK, substitute. Here's the whole if function that continues up to that to last uh, closing parenthesis. So after that second parenthesis, we're back in the substitute function, right? We're no longer in concatenate. We're no longer in F. We're back in the substitute function. So I'm going to say comma. OK, if you find a comma and a space, right? that's the old text, then the new text, we're going to replace that with nothing. Just two quotation marks. Close the outer parenthesis for the substitute function. And look at that. We're right back to where we were, where we have no commas again. So let me undo that. Go back into the formula. In the substitute function, we saw that last argument, that optional argument, was to put an instance number in. So what I'm going to do is say comma 1. We're going to start doing this after the first instance. Comma, hmm. But now 
look at that. It's removing too many commas. We're kind of right back to where we were uh, just before. The way we fix this is to add a comma and space to the true portion of the first if statement. Remember the, let's delete this. Remember in the first if statement for column B, we said, oh, we don't really need to put in that ampersand and to put in the comma space and ampersand because that's the first one, right? We did that in the second and the third. Well, here's the little trick. If I put that in, that in quotation mark, comma, space, closing quote, put in an ampersand. So even though you might not think that's necessary, we need to do that to make the substitute function work properly. So now let me enter that. That looks good. Now let's autofill to the bottom. There we go. And now that works. So no matter if you have three items in there, delete that. If I have something here at the beginning, if I have something there starting in the middle, whatever it is, it's all going to work fine. And we have commas where we want them, and we don't have commas where we don't want them. Okay, that was kind of complicated. <laughs> there was a lot of bouncing around and putting things in and taking them out, kind of like the hokey pokey. But with Excel, sometimes we have to do things that way. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets. <laughs>